Welcome to our ADM Lucid Automation Testing channel. We will have a series of talk about Selenium Automation Testing, which will help you understand the basics of Selenium and also guide you to build your own Selenium Automation Project. You may access our test project and guide in the description below. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for any new videos and updates. In today's video, we will be talking about Selenium's expected conditions. So Selenium's expected conditions are a set of predefined conditions that you can use to wait for specific elements or events or states to occur within a web page when automating your browser interactions. So these are part of the Selenium WebDriver framework and are useful when you want to synchronize your test script with the web application's behavior. Using expected conditions can help ensure that your automation script interacts with elements on the page only when they are in the desired state. For example, when certain things are clickable or when certain elements are visible or when certain things are present. So to use the Selenium expected condition, this is what you must do. You must typically first import web driver weight use and also import expected conditions. Also, some expected conditions that you can define uh, on your script is, for example, URL to be, visibility of certain elements, uh, maybe this element is clickable, uh, then you do element to be clickable, or text to be, element to be selected, and so on. So before showing you our sample code, I just want to direct you to the expected conditions website that Selenium has itself. So on this website, you can find a bunch of different things you can test for, uh, a bunch of different expected conditions and so on. Uh, for the sake of time uh, and during this tutorial, uh, we've only selected a few to test for in our sample code. So now I'm just going to show you our sample code. So this is our sample code for expected conditions. So to begin with, you see that we imported expected condition here, and we also imported web driver wait. So within our code, we have a bunch of different methods again, that tests a bunch of different expected conditions. So let's begin with, let's begin with page title URL. So in this method, Basically, what we test for is we define a string S for the title, and we define a string URL for the URL. And we test using the web weight driver, web driver weight here, and then we use expected condition title is S here to see that the title on the web page is actually index dash ADM lucid. And the second one, web driver weight, and we define here, we tell it to wait three seconds and then this one title contains s this essentially does the same thing these two things both test if the title on the web page is the string s that we defined here now down here we have three different statements and all three of these essentially do the same thing they test if the url on the web page we have is this one admlucid.com golf and basically we test if the URL, for example, the first one is URL to be, second one is URL contains, third one is URL matches. These three all see uh, and test for the same thing. So again, this uh, expected conditions.java class is under the package uh, for controller package. Uh, and then we also defined under the test package like before, uh, the expected C dash Chrome. So we're just gonna open that up and I'm just gonna uncomment this part relating to the page URL, uh, page title URL. And save really quick, and then I'm just gonna run it. So after we finish running it here, we actually saved our output into this folder screenshot. Uh, and we can open it up and we see that all five of the all five of the uh, the functions, the expected condition functions, they passed. So title is, title contains, URL to be, URL contains, and URL matches. They all passed. So let me just go back to our original code 
And let's say I add an S into the URL here. Uh, and let's try to run this again. So since we changed the URL into something else, what we expect is that all the URL ones will fail. So we'll give it some time to run. And now we're going to go back to the same folder. We're going to open it up. And we see that the title is and title contains these two, they both paths. However, the three regarding the URL ones, they fail. And it's because the URL that we test for is different than the URL on the web page. So we can go ahead and close these two. And now I'm going to go back here. So I'll delete that for now. Uh, now we can look at some other functions. So here we have void to be text matches. And in this one, essentially what we do is we're testing if on the website, this right here, we go here, this text to be at this specific location it matches, so right here at this H1 location, if it matches if it matches the text right here that we define. So right here. And the second statement here is essentially doing the same thing, except we're using the function text to be present in element located by instead. And you see in the two different ones right here, uh, they have different locators, but they essentially point to the same thing. So that's text to be text matches. Uh, next, we have the visibility of elements. And for this one, essentially what we have is we have this image on our website. So we have this image right here. And we're texting and we're testing if this image is visible. So right here, this first one, basically we're testing visibility of element located at that specific location. And then in the second one here, we're testing if it's invisible, so if we can't see it. And so for the second one, we would expect it to fail. Now next we have the method element to be selected. So for this one, basically what we have is we could have like a text box. So if I go to here, or, or not a text box, but a checkbox, uh, for example, maybe not here, I go to here. Uh, for example, uh, it will test for if this checkbox is checked on the website or if it's not. So if we look at it, this first statement here, element to be selected. And basically, it's checking if this checkbox one is selected or not. And so in this one, we haven't selected it. So the first one, it should return false, it hasn't been selected. But in the second one right here, we will basically click the checkbox. So now it's selected. And again, we will test if it's uh, selected again. And this time, it should return true, it is selected. Next, we have element to be clickable. And in this one, basically what we're doing is we're testing if this certain element on the page we can click. So let me go to the website. Uh, go back to our web page, web elements. So down here, we have a button. So this button disable for 15 seconds. Right now, we can click it. It's clickable. So when I click it, after I click it, it's no longer clickable for the next 15 seconds. So basically what we do is we are testing if it's clickable. So first we test if it's clickable, element to be clickable, and then we give it its ID. And then we basically click the button and then we test again if it's clickable. So the first one should be clickable, but after we click it, it should no longer be clickable when we test it the second time. And so those are the methods that we've generated for this. 
So let us go back to our test class. And I'm just going to comment out this first one because we already tested for it. And I'm going to uncomment this one, this one, and this one. So I'm just going to run these three first and then I'll run the last one afterwards. So save and then go ahead and run it. And now we can open up the results and see what we got. So, as we see during the first one where it's uh, text to be, this is basically checking if the text that we're looking at is actually the text that we see on the website. And we see that both of these, text to be and text to be present in element located, they both return as true. In the second one, we test to see if that image is visible on our website. And in the first one, we asserted visibility of element located is true. So we can see that image on the website. And in the second part of this method, we tested if that image, the same image, is invisible. And as expected, because the image is visible, it returns false for being invisible. And we see here, it gives us the false error. And now in the third element, uh, or the third method to be tested, um, called be selected. In this one, we have the checkbox on our website. And we basically, first we test if that checkbox is selected. And we see that because nothing, we did nothing with the checkbox yet, it wasn't selected. And so this first returns false for being selected. However, after we give it the command to check the checkbox, we can test again to see if the checkbox is uh, selected. And in the second statement where we check if the checkbox is selected now, we, we see that it returns true because we selected the checkbox. So let's go back to here. We'll uncomment the last one and we're going to comment out these first three again. And we're going to run it again. So let us open it up again and we see that first we can click it because it hasn't been clicked yet. But after we click the button, now it's disabled for 15 seconds. So when we try to check again the second time if the element is clickable, it gives us an error that the element is not clickable. And yeah, so that concludes all the different conditions that we tested for uh, in this uh, lines of code. Uh, remember that they have their own documentation as well. So there's some other things you can test for, uh, some other conditions you can wait for as well. Um, I hope that you found this video somewhat helpful. And if you did, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for listening, and we hope to see you again next time.